Example one, okay? <laughs> Bless you, I'm gonna use this notation over here. So you've got this elongated S, which means the thing you're about to see, I want you to anti-differentiate it. And the, uh, the function I'm gonna give you is this. Now, I'm giving you this one on purpose because we've just looked at it, right? I want to undo the process of differentiation that we did before, okay? Now, you took a function, you took the index, you brought it down the front, you multiply by that, and then you reduce the index by one. Do you remember that? Okay. So, to undo that, we need to do everything I just described, but in reverse. So, we're going to take this index and we're going to... Flip it. We're not going to flip it. <laughs> I hope not. We're going to add one to it, right? So let's do that. Okay, I'm going to come to trying to form a rule around it in a second. Okay, I've increased the index. Okay, that six is still ha hanging around there. And then after I increase it, I have to undo the other thing, which means I have to divide. Right? I have to divide by that index. Does that make sense? Okay. Let me say this again, okay? When you are differentiating, you reduce the index by one, you, and then you, sorry, let me say that again. You multiply by the index, and then you reduce the index by one. Do you remember that? Okay? So I've done both of those things in reverse. I've increased the index, and then instead of multiplying, I divided by that. So we're not. Sean. Say it again. Would that be 2x cubed? Would that be 2x cubed? Well, I'm, I'm not finished with this line, but it will be in a second. Mori, did you have a question? Yeah, do you have to write it uh, 6x3 on 3, or can you, not, can you just write it 2x3? I am going to come down to the next line and simplify this in a second, but I wanted you to know where I got those numbers from. Okay. John? Say it again. Hold on a second, you 12. Sorry, I have to ask you to say it a third time, John, but this time I can hear you. Can you repeat your question, please? Can you please do that again? Yeah, absolutely. This is why I didn't go straight to the next thing, okay? When we did this in the first place, if I gave you, say, I'm going to give you a different example now. When I take something like this, if I ask you to differentiate it, then two things happen, right? First, I'm going to, mark it, multiply by this index. Let's do that. Here it comes. We multiplied first. In fact, it's so important, I'm going to write it down. That's the first thing I did. And then secondly, you can all tell me, right? You... Minus the power. Yeah, you reduce the index by one, right? Like so. Is that okay? So, reduce index. Now, that order matters, doesn't it? Right? You can't reduce the index and then multiply. You get a different result, wouldn't you? Right? So, this is step one. This is step two. Now what I'm trying to do is undo exactly that. I'm trying to undo exactly that. So let's come over to this example now, right? Instead of, I'm going to go in reverse, instead of reducing the index, I'm going to increase the index, right? So that's why I went from 2 to 3. Are you happy with that step? Okay. So I've undone this, and now I need to undo this. How do you undo multiplication? You divide, which is why I divide down here. And the order, of course, just like before, matters. Because you'd get a different answer completely if you did them the other way. Are you happy with that? Yeah. Have a look at this guy. Can we do it to this as well? This is a bit sneaky, right? Because you're like, increase the index. What index is it? Well, there is an index. It's hiding, though. The index here, how can we write this with an index? It's one lot of x to what power? Zero, Zero right? There are no x's, which is why it's x to the power of 0. Does that make sense? OK, now we can go through this. I'm going to increase the index, which gives me increase. From 0, it goes to 1. So I can write a, an x. Right? And then what do I do now? This is x to the power of 1, I should say. I, I'm, I've got to undo this as well, right? Which in this case has no effect when you divide by 1, but you had to do it anyway. Question mark? How would you know if there's like a plus um, whatever? Are you talking about this minus here? No, like or are you talking about? That's where it is on the y-axis. You know, when there's no x involved, how would you just like? Sorry, which which part are you talking about? Are you talking about like, say this part here? Plus two x plus two. How would you know if there was that last? Ah, good question. So you're asking about what comes next. Is that what you're asking? Yeah, right. That's a really great question. Okay. Now let's let's just simplify this, and then I'll answer that question. Um, some of you wanted to do this right away. What is six x cubed? 
divided by 3. 2x cubed. And then this guy just becomes take away x. Now hold on a second. And this comes to Will and Moe's question, right? This is not the function that you started with. This is not the function you started with. This isn't the primitive that you did in part A. There was a, what was there here? There was like a plus 1, right? Now, here's the issue, right? Th these two functions here, this guy and this guy, the gradients on every part of those curves are identical. The gradients are identical. What's different with this or with this or with this is its position, right? Its position. So this is already our biggest fundamental difference between like when you go back to this process when you get a primitive, right? There isn't just a primitive. There isn't a single one. There's actually a whole family of them, right? Now the way we catch this, the way we say, well, it could be anything, any constant number could tag along the end here, is we say, well, it could be any constant. Instead of writing constant because we're lazy, we choose a letter, C. we choose the letter C, okay? Oh. So this is actually something which you have to include all the way through because any of these could differentiate to give you 6x squared minus 1. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So this is important. This guy here is a whole family of primitives, and that's so important I'm going to write it down. Okay. So, um, can, we, can we codify this a little bit? Yeah. We're going to focus... Oh yeah, question. Yeah, Tavar. I understand. We have the minus 1. How is this positive? Because I don't think we have anything to positive. You're talking about this one here? So x to the power of 0 is just 1. So that's why we can sort of get away with not writing it, right? But I need to see that it's x to the power of 0 in order to work out how to undo this process of differentiation, right? So if we go back to when we did question A earlier on, right? There was a minus x here, and it ended up with minus 1. So in order to get back from the minus 1 to this minus x, I need to write it in index form so I can see. I'm increasing an index, and then I'm dividing by that. Does that make sense? OK. Last little thing before I set you loose on this exercise, right? Shh, shh, shh. What we want to do is generalize this. Is there a way I can do this a little more automatically? If, for example, I asked you to anti-differentiate any power of x, x cubed, x to the power of 100, um, you can slap a number at the front, a coefficient if you like, right? With respect to x, what were the two things that we did to undo this process of differentiation? Step one, we increased the index by one. So the index is currently n. What would it be if I increased it by one? n plus one. n plus one. And then the second thing I did was I divide by this new power, which is n plus one, like so. Okay. Um, there was long, one last thing I needed to do because this is not the only thing that would differentiate to that. I have to include this plus c, and it's actually got a name all by itself, this little guy here. It's actually called, and I've been avoiding saying it until this last moment because um, I finally can't avoid saying it, right? It's the constant of this process, anti-differentiation, it has another name, which is integrating. Now, I've been avoiding saying this word because it sort of comes out of left field. Why would the opposite of differentiating be called integrating? What does that even mean? We're going to save that for a future lesson. But it's the, re the reason I'm telling you now is because this plus c, its name, is the constant of integration. It's what you get when you go through this process of anti-differentiation, this process of integration. It appears here to cover the whole family. Okay? Any questions?